Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube episode, I want to talk about intentional overdoses. Um, it was crazy. Last week I worked five night shifts in a row and every single day I dealt with some sort of overdose case, either a known overdose or um, the patient did not know what they overdosed on or what kind of pills they overdosed on. They just saw some in their friend's house and they took them. One of them was a known aspirin overdose. Um, they eventually got admitted um, to the floor and observed. And another one was an intentional opioid overdose. We gave a lot of Narcan and the emergency department and they eventually got admitted. Another one was an unknown overdose. This patient actually had a prolonged QT, so they ended up getting admitted into the floor. And a couple other cases that ended up actually being pretty stable and they got moved over to our psychiatry unit. Um, so for this week, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about overdoses and what to order for each, um, if intentional or not. So let's get started. When you don't know what the patient has overdosed on, being a good detective in this case is very important. Um, pay attention to the vitals. If they have an elevated heart rate, that can be a sign of sympathomimetic, um, or it can be a sign of alcohol withdrawal. Um, when they have respiratory depression and their O2 stats are dropping, that can be a sign of opioid overdose, benzo overdose, TCA overdose, or even um, alcohol intoxication. Um, the eyes can be a dead giveaway as well. So if they have meiosis, it can be um, a cholinergic or an opioid, or if they have mygeriasis, then it can be um, a sympathomimetic or anticholinergic. So when it comes to the workup of these patients, either a known ingestion or not, it tends to be pretty broad. Um, so you're gonna wanna get a CMP because you want those liver enzymes included, a CBC, um, you wanna look at the platelet levels a lot of times, um, magnesium and phosphorus, you always wanna check out all the electrolytes of these patients and wanna correct anything that may be off. Um, get an EKG because a lot of ingestions can cause QT prolongation, QRS prolongation, tachyarrhythmias, bradyarrhythmias, um, and then you're going to want to get TCA, salicylate, and acetaminophen levels. Um, then you want to grab an ethanol level to see if alcohol was involved, a urine drug screen, um, get a CK if you think that the patient might have overdosed on some of their antipsychotics, um, possibly causing neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Um, and then you're going to want to get um, a blood gas to look at um, if there's any gap or what the pH is. If it's the anion gap metabolic acidosis, it can give you a good clue on to what the patient might have ingested as well. So the pneumonic mud piles is something used for anion gap metabolic acidosis. These are all the causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis, and a lot of them include ingestion. So M can stand for methanol or metformin, P can stand for paraldehyde, um, paracetamol, which is um, acetaminophen, fenformin, which is a diabetic drug not used much anymore. Um, I can stand for iron, ibuprofen, isoniazid, which is that tuberculosis drug, Drug. E could stand for ethylene glycol or ethanol, which is just um, alcohol, and S can stand for salicylates. Also, if you've done um, your entire history and physical exam on this patient, you still don't know really what's going on, they took some sort of ingestion, and you don't really know what to order or where to start in your treatment process, call poison control. I actually call poison control no matter what. Um, they are very insightful into what to do for many different patients and they actually follow along with the patient and tell you how long you need to observe them, what labs you need to order, and what initial treatment that you need to start on these patients. So they are very, very insightful. Um, and usually along with treatment, I always start at least one liter of fluid on these patients to get that going. Um, in terms of antiemetics, a lot of these patients usually come in throwing up. Um, because they just took a lot of pills, their stomach's not happy. I never order any antiemetics until I get a QT um, back on my EKG. Um, a lot of antiemetics can cause prolonged QT intervals, and a lot of ingestions can also cause this. So make sure you don't order any antiemetics first thing um, as they're having all this nausea and vomiting before you know that QT. And a lot of times I even forego it as well. 
Um, a lot of these patients will have a lot of meshed up electrolytes and whatever they ingested will cause a QT prolongation. So it's just very dangerous to order something on top of that. Plus, I want them to be throwing up whatever they took into their body. Um, so just keep that in mind. Everyone has their own practice. So when it comes to specific overdoses, um, you're going to want to remember the antidotes that go with them. Um, so for a Tylenol overdose, you want to remember NAC, um, plus or minus activated charcoal if it's been within four hours. Um, that's highly debated. Uh, poison control gloves activated charcoal. Um, there's been a lot of adverse re reactions to activated charcoal lately. Um, so that will be um, provider preference in that regard. With aspirin overdoses, you are going to want to do bicarb, um, potassium replacement, and plus or minus activated charcoal. Um, with beta blocker, beta blocker overdoses, you want to do glucagon. Calcium channel blockers, you can also do glucagon, but you can also do calcium chloride replacement and high doses of insulin. Um, when it comes to opioid overdoses, um, obviously Narcan or Naloxone. Um, and when it comes to benzo overdoses, um, it's Flumazenil. So remember those, those are some of the most common um, antidotes to the most common um, ingestions in the ED. Some other common um, specific antidotes that you can do um, for clonidine overdoses, then you're going to want to give dopamine. Um, for cocaine overdose, you can do clonidine for the hypertension, Ativan, um, but remember no beta blockers in a cocaine overdose because you can have unopposed alpha stimulation. Um, when it comes to TCA overdoses, you're going to want to do sodium bicarb. Um, any type of anticholinergic overdose, you can do um, physostigmine. Uh, iron overdoses, deferoxamine, and then digoxin overdoses. Um, these are usually um, not intentional, but any type of digoxin toxicity, you can do digibind. And then a lot of people um, with a suspected ingestion and um, concomitantly they are in a coma, um, you can use the coma cocktail on them. And for this, I use the mnemonic of DONT, D-O-N-T, D standing for dextrose. So a lot of these patients can be low on sugar. So giving them dextrose can help. Um, o stands for oxygen. Um, N for Narcan or Naloxone. And then T for thymine if you are suspecting Wernicke's encephalopathy. Um, and if you have a high suspicion for Wernicke's encephalopathy, make sure you give thymine before you give glucose. In terms of disposition for anybody who overdoses, you need to figure out was this an intentional overdose to end their life or was it unintentional and they just didn't um, read the actual dosing properties of their prescription. Um, if it's intentional and these patients are stable, have no lab abnormalities, their QT and QRS look fine, um, then they need to see psychiatry before any disposition is to be established. Um, if the patient's unstable, um, and I usually determine this by their vital signs and or respiratory rate and or any abnormal lab values, um, then you need to figure out whether this patient needs to go to the floor or the ICU. Now, there can be many ICU indications, um, but some parameters that I like to go by um, that make patients, ICU players in my mind, are a blood pressure that's systolic less than 80 or a MAP less than 65, um, any type of O2 abnormalities, so the patient's not responding to verbal stimuli, um, they might have had a seizure, um, their uh, partial pressure of CO2 is greater than 45, or they required intubation in the emergency department. All of those require ICU admission in my eyes. Um, and then anything on EKG, so a QRS greater than um, 0.12, or if they went into any abnormal arrhythmia other than sinus, um, then I would definitely consider ICU as well for those patients. And that's it guys, thanks for listening. Um, I hope this helps you in terms of your workup and your treatment options for people who have ingested uh, certain medications beyond what they are prescribed. Um, and never forget, call Poison Control, they're very helpful. Alrighty, see you next Wednesday guys.